With only 10 days remaining of 2023, will Bitcoin be able to make a push to 48,000? Let's go ahead and find out. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the likelihood of a rally to 48,000 before the end of 2023, going over a variety of technical and structural charts on the short term and of course on the macro, as well as taking a look at the total cryptocurrency market cap and total altcoin market cap. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that comment button and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos on Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical, the structural and of course the relevant economic news. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you're interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the third link down below. You will get access to charts updates, videos, educational posts, news events, everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin and the relevant economic news. If you are interested in trading, you can join our VIP group. We post trading setups with exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, and of course, exclusive analysis. Not only will you get access to our VIP group, you'll also get access to our group chats, our general chat, our trading chart and education chat, our news chat, our help chat, our daily video chat, our trade setup chat, and everything else in there. If you're interested in joining over 600 members, go ahead and contact me in the pinned comment of the free channel. For more information, let's go ahead and dive on into the video. So starting on that market data, how are we looking for today? 24 hour volume is sitting just over 100 billion at 108. This is down 10% in the last 24 hours. With that, we've seen a 42% reduction in 24 hour liquidations, sitting at a relatively high 137 million still, with 81 million in long liquidations and 55 million in short liquidations. Taking a look really briefly at that short term price action, we did see a break of this diagonal downtrend, which resulted in Bitcoin moving towards our first target, which was the range low of this prior horizontal consolidation, which was around 43,100 to 43,260, which we did actually come up and test, which we have now rejected on. We'll be discussing this in more detail in just a moment. So with that, we saw an upward swing, liquidating a whole bunch of shorts. Again, a lot of people would have entered longs at resistance over here. We have seen a pullback now, liquidating a whole bunch of longs. So that is where those 24 hour liquidations have derived from. Moving over to the volatility index on the 30 day Again, not too much change over here. We saw volatility drop a little bit over the last few days on the 30 day volatility index as the price action has been compressing in this more or less sideways consolidation. So that is expected. And of course, on the 60 day, we have seen more or less the same thing. Volatility index is still representative of a overall uptrend, but we are seeing a small little drip. Let's go ahead guys and jump over to the DXY. So the DXY is still in a overall downtrend. We are expecting the DXY to continue downwards into the major area of support at 101.5 to 101. You can see we did have a small bullish divergence develop over here. However, not enough momentum to push the price upwards and get over this major area of resistance represented by the green box. Until then, we do still expect the price to move downwards into this range of support. If we do lose this range of support, we're then looking for these local lows we made back in July 2023, all the way down at 99 to 100. If we are able to reclaim this green box, we'll be flipping a major horizontal resistance. The DXY will likely enter a short-term uptrend to retest that major downtrending resistance we've established since the start of October. However, guys, the downtrend is still in play and the DXY is looking weak. With the weakening dollar, we do generally see assets rise. We have seen just that for the S&P 500 and Dow Jones. With the S&P 500, as of today, making a brand new all-time high price over 4,800, actually breaking through that major $4,800 resistance, moving into price discovery with just two days and 23 hours until that weekly candle close. A weekly candle close above this level will turn this level of resistance 
into a level of support and provide a nice higher level of support for the price to continue up from. Taking a look at the Dow Jones, we are still in that price discovery, actually pushing closer to 38,000 US dollars. Again, slightly ahead of the S&P 500 over here, already converting this prior resistance into a new base of support. Meaning while we remain above this level, we are technically going to be bullish and technically continuing upwards. If at any point we retest this, it will be considered a healthy retest. Only if we break below the lower range of the support range, that is when we'd assume this trend to flip. Let's go ahead guys and jump over to Bitcoin and really quickly, we are going to be taking a look at the total cryptocurrency market cap for altcoins for Bitcoin. We're going to be taking a look, a deep look at the technicals on the short term and of course doing a complete structural analysis, deciding or determining where the price action is likely to go next and of course planning and preparing for probable moves. We'll also be taking a look at a few indicators on the monthly chart, mainly the Boilinger bands as it is indicating a breakout likely. Let's go ahead guys and jump into that before we do a quick word from BitGet and BingX and we'll dive right in. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two exchanges we use on this channel, BitGet and BingX. So which exchange should you sign up to? If you look to the right hand side of the screen, you're gonna see the list of differences in relation to KYC requirements and the countries these exchanges offer services to. The first link down below being the BitGet link and the second link down below being the BingX link. No matter which link you sign up to, you're going to get up to 15% discounts on your trading fees, up to 5,000 US dollars in trading rewards, and of course, you'll get access to every single MegaWow exclusive bonus campaign we run on these exchanges. Alongside that, BitGet and BingX are incredibly similar. They are both ranked top 10 in terms of trading volume. They both have extensive liquidity pools and market pairs offering up to 125x leverage. And most importantly, they both offer protection funds for the users to protect you against any third party hacks. So get started now and support the channel by clicking the links below. Thanks for listening. Okay, straight into Bitcoin, guys. Let's go ahead and start off on these charts here, the total cryptocurrency markup. As we can see, both the total cryptocurrency markup and the total three, which is again, excluding Ethereum and excluding Bitcoin, are at a major, major point of resistance. Now, these levels are macro levels of resistance. Starting on the total three, we can see this is going to be our monthly bearish resistance meaning this is our monthly bullish trigger point if we are able to break a candle a monthly candle above this level this is going to flip the overall monthly trend from a downtrend into a uptrend for old coins we will likely see a move like what we have seen on bitcoin uh if we look at the total pressing markup we saw a huge breakout of this wedge moving upwards into that next level of resistance around about the 640 billion dollar range could be expected for altcoins if we break through this resistance so a huge move toward the upside could occur for altcoins if we are able to break through this immediate resistance now this immediate resistance is of course a huge resistance there's been resistance ever since may 2022 so over 365 days over here and it again is the trigger point for a macro shift in the trends so when we have these high time frame trigger points the higher the time frame to trigger the harder it is to break above moving over to the total altcoin market cap again we are sitting at that major level of resistance breaking through this level will send uh, the total altcoin our uh, total cryptocurrency market cap sorry upwards to the next level of resistance sitting around 2.1 trillion so a huge move loading there as well let's go ahead and jump into bitcoin so on the short term guys a lot is going on what we have actually developed over here is a short term horizontal channel we have our first lows down over here 0.1 and 2 we have 0.3 up over here as resistance we have a retest of a low and of course we have another retest of these highs so we have developed a nice horizontal channel over here a nice parallel channel which of course is going to be a neutral structure now looking at this channel for what it is we have to understand that the direction of entry into a channel is the overall directional strength the channel actually has meaning when we see a directional move into a channel from the top side down 
we have to understand the overall assumption is that this is a bearish channel until it is proven to be bullish. So we have to identify the parameters in which these points or the trend may flip. So looking at the channel, we entered from the top side down. So we have this overall bearish momentum, this bearish trend moving into the channel. And during this phase, okay, the bulls are trying to regain this strength, but are currently failing to do so. So we have this bearish strength present throughout this short-term channel. Now that is a different story on the higher time frame, but we're just talking about the short term over here. So what does that mean? It means unless proven otherwise, the overall trajectory of this channel is actually going to be downwards and an assumed breakdown through to that $40,000 to $38,000 major support, more likely retesting that macro uptrending support line, which is reflected by this diagonal support level. However, we have to also remember that parallel channels are neutral structures. So just because we're breaking from the top side down, it doesn't confirm the fact that we're going to go down. It just slightly increases the probability that that is the directional move Bitcoin will undergo. Now, what actually determines the directional move from channels is the directional break. Meaning if at any point we break above the bullish trigger, remember, which is the horizontal resistance of the prior parallel channel, this is extended across to reach this dotted trend line, which is the upper level of resistance we are now rejecting from. If we are able to breach this level and break above this level, that would confirm a bullish breakout of this channel and we will likely move upwards to retest our range high, which is the level of resistance we rejected on the upper end of our prior horizontal channel. This, of course, will be very, very bullish as it would flip the current resistance at 43.2k, the one we have been rejecting from on the short term, as a level of support, okay, and facilitate a continuation upwards. The measured move of this will take us to at least 45.5, potentially to 46k, reaching that 46 to 48k range, okay? Fulfilling what we said at the start of the video, the possibility for a move to those levels. Now, if we look toward the downside, we have to apply the same measured move. The measured move toward the downside upon the breakdown could take us to around 38.3k. However, we do have to be aware that measured moves do not determine the extent of a move. It just tells us the range of which the price could move toward the nearest high time frame or short-term major structural level of liquidity. In this instance, that is going to be 40,000. So a breakdown of this parallel channel could result in a move to 40,000 or between 40,000 and this diagonal up training support line at around 39 to 39.5K. That is going to be the bearish move. So let's go ahead now and take a look at some of the technical indicators and try to decipher what the trend is looking like and how this strength is actually developing. So like we've said already, this is going to be a parallel consolidation, which has been lasting around nine days. So it is only natural now, if we look at the technicals, we see parallel consolidations, we see neutral momentum, we see a decreasing amount of volatility and momentum uh, actually present in these indicators. It's not going to show us anything that's suggesting a breakout. It's not going to show us anything that's suggesting a significant amount of strength, because if we had a significant amount of strength, we would have already broken upwards. Remember, technical indicators are derivatives of price action. So we're not going to generally see something on an indicator that is mind-blowingly different to what we can decipher from the price action alone. When you get to the point in your own analysis where you understand how price section moves and you've watched it happen thousands of times, you can almost picture what the RSI is doing, what the momentum is doing, what the volatility is doing without it actually looking at those indicators as it all is a derivative of another. So in this instance, looking at these indicators are going to be to some degree pointless. 
we have to not look at it for what it is, but look at it for what it could be in the future when we actually break or retest these key trigger points. So let's go ahead and start on our CVD. If we take a look at the CVD, there are two key levels we are watching out for. Represented, actually let's go ahead and move this up a little bit so we can see it a little larger with the price action. Represented by these dashed lines. We have of course the level of which we reached and held above at resistance, which matches this range high, which is going to be the upper level of resistance at 44K. And of course, this lower level of support over here, which we can see we developed at around that midline within the current channel. This is reflected as that midline. A loss of this dotted trend line will validate a continuation downwards toward the lower range of this parallel channel, where again, we will either break down and continue lower or bounce and continue back to the range high. So looking at that, for a break upwards, we would like to see the CVD breach this 60K level represented by this dotted trend line upon the retest or a coming close to a retest of the range high. So if the CVD is able to breach this dotted trend line as the price action breaches this dotted trend line, that would indicate we have adequate volume and strength to breach this high and continue upwards. That is the first thing I'll be looking at. Number two, looking at overall momentum again on the short term, we did have a positive momentum flip. We broke above this diagonal trend line over here, which facilitated a break of the diagonal uh, trend line on the price chart and a move up to 43.3K. Overall momentum is still positive. If we draw our overall uptrend on the RS. R, 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 sorry, on the RSI over here, we can see we do have a overall uptrend in momentum. I would like to see this resume. If at any point we break down from this level, that would be a strong indication that this parallel channel is going to break down as the overall momentum that we have been developing within this parallel consolidation has just turned negative. So right now we have more or less neutral momentum in a slight uptrend. However, if the momentum that has been developing within this channel, because we have this range over here, breaks downwards and we have a negative momentum flip, that would indicate we have lost strength and we are likely moving toward the downside. On the flip side, while we remain above this uptrend, we are slightly likely to retest this upper level of resistance and again, break toward the upside according to our RSI chart. So again, you can see how there's a variety of stuff going on when we're looking at these parallel channels. There is not a clean cut and concise way. Sometimes in trading, it is not about certainties. It's not about this is going to happen. It is about determining what the price action is doing, assessing what the buyers and sellers are doing through your technical indicators and of course through your structural analysis and then assigning probabilities based on historical data. Okay, based on historical data, and then having a game plan to execute whatever occurs next. So in this instance, a lot of people will say, well, you're not saying anything. What are you saying? If you're listening to what we're saying, we're giving you a plan. We're telling you what to look out for to flip biases and actually flip the pro probabilities in your favor. If you see those certain trigger points break, if you see those validations on the indicators break, that is a significant shift in the buyers and sellers actions within this channel. And when we see a significant shift in buyers and sellers or the strength of buyers and sellers within a certain channel or a parallel channel, whatever structure we're looking at, that can significantly sway the probabilities of a break downwards or upwards depending on the validation criteria you are looking for. Remember, based on my own trading, what I use is a five point validation rule for structures and a three point validation method for breakouts and trading. I look for momentum. Is there positive momentum for a breakout? I look at volume. Is there positive volume? So CVD. And of course, I look at overall trend. Has the price actually broken the trend? We look for strength, okay, in the form of volume and momentum. And we look for direction in the form of trend. You want to be trading into the trend. You want to be trading into direction. And you want to be trading with strength and buyers behind you. So let's go ahead guys and end up the short term over there, a lot to be looking at. If we go to a higher time frame very slightly, we can be taking a look at this uptrend. Again, like we said already, while we remain above this uptrending support line, we are in a uptrend 
just because the short term can give us a potential retest of this level, that doesn't change anything, guys. We are still in a overall uptrend for Bitcoin. Let's go ahead and take a look at the monthly chart and then wrap up the video. So like we said at the start of the video, there is a particular indicator we are watching very, very closely. And this is going to be the Bollinger Bands, guys. And as we can see, we are potentially breaking above the Bollinger Bands here for the first time since we broke above them all the way back in, what was this? October 2020. And prior to that, the first time since May 2016. Once over here, and once over here. Notice a pattern every single time we close a monthly candle close above the upper band of the Bollinger Band after being in a bear market, we enter that bull run phase, guys. We never actually break back below the midline of the Bollinger Bands until only after we have created an all-time high. So to run you through it one more time, okay? We'll run one more time. We enter a bear market. Awesome. We're in a bear market. We travel upwards. We travel upwards. We break a monthly candle close above the Boilinger Bands. We enter a bull market remaining above the Boilinger Band midline until after the all-time high has been printed, only then breaking back below it. We're in a bear market. We travel upwards. We break a monthly candle close above. We remain in a bull market until we create that all-time high, only then crossing the midline after the all-time high has been printed. So, in 12 days time, we are going to see whether or not we have what it takes to close a monthly candle above the upper band of the Boilinger Band. If so, the midline has been turned into a base of support at around 26.7k, which should not be lost until only after the all-time high has been printed, which is something spectacular to observe. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, guys. Check out the Crypto Academy courses. It is a link down below. 10 in a course. We teach you guys how to trade. If you're interested, send off the email and check out the website. And I'll catch you guys in the next video tomorrow. Cheers.